Rostov on Don, Russia, October 1982. A special task force is desperately searching for a serial killer. The investigation had begun four months earlier when the body of a 13-year-old girl was found in a desolate patch of forest. She had been stabbed repeatedly. Her eyes had been gouged out. There's a Russian superstition that the last sight that, the, that a murder victim sees uh, is somehow imprinted on the surface of the eye. Soon, two more bodies with similar wounds were discovered. All three had been sexually assaulted. All the bodies were found in the woods near the railway tracks in the Oktyabrsky and Shakhti districts. At first, the brutal and ritualistic nature of the killings led police to suspect a satanic cult was at work or a group harvesting organs to sell for transplant. Police also wondered if a gang of boys from a local home for the mentally handicapped might be responsible. They dubbed the investigation the case of fools. None of these theories panned out. In the Soviet era, local investigators were not prepared to understand the brutal nature of the killings. They had not dealt with anyone of his caliber before. They were reluctant to admit that things uh, like this would occur in a communist state. The best they could do was gather bits of evidence. We got down to serious work, first of all, with the identification of the bodies and then forensic tests of the remains. Despite these efforts, the body count rose. By 1984, we had found 23 bodies. Some of the bodies were still fresh, which gave us a broader picture of the injuries and the killer's behavior at the site of crime. Many of the victims were young girls and boys who had been discovered in the wooded areas around Rostov. All had been mutilated. When they found some of the victims, you could still see the reflection of horror in their eyes. It was very hard to look at because many were just children. There were cut abdomens, amputated breasts. It was horrible to see. And in many cases, it was clear that those body parts had been removed by the teeth of the killer. A lot of the bodies were found near transportation points, bus stations, train stations in particular, which indicated that the killer, whoever he was, was somebody who used the Soviet transportation system extensively. Despite clear evidence that a serial killer was on the loose, Soviet police and the Communist Party-controlled media refused to release any information. In the absence of real facts, rumors spread throughout the region. There were rumors of people with state black limousines, you know, scarfing up children in the countryside. But in the absence of any real media, these children disappeared and nobody knew that they had gone. With no solid suspects, Rostov police began a wide-ranging manhunt, arresting nearly anyone who looked even vaguely suspicious. They had a lot of manpower, and they deployed dozens and dozens of detectives trying to come up with suspects. But for eight years, the killer remained at large. Initially, his victims tended to come more from the ranks of what they called women with disorderly sex lives. But as time went on, he started to take more and more boys, innocent children, whoever he could lure and kill. He chose children whose physical stature made it easy for them to be manipulated. He chose prostitutes who were willing to go with a stranger. Police focused their efforts on transportation hubs. 
they put very high profile police officers, uniforms, etc., in all but a few train stations or bus stations. Все станции были, крупные станции были все 